So I'm going to show you really quickly on this mock wall that I have in here behind me how I go about installing overhead lighting, of course with a switch, where I get my power from, and of course keep in mind this is just a mock board, so of course my receptacle is going to be a little bit higher. This is not to scale, but I'm going to be able to show you the basics about how I go about doing it. Now in order to install the light switch, you're going to have to cut a hole in the drywall in order to then install a box for the light switch to go into. So the way to go about doing this is locate where you want your light switch to go, make sure it's at a height that is appropriate per code, and then you're going to want to mark around the area where you want to cut your hole. I typically take my box, put it up against the wall, and trace out a line. Then I use a jab saw and I cut out my hole in order to then install my box. All right, so now from here, now I like to work a little bit backwards. Now I like to work back towards my light switch. So I need to cut a hole in the ceiling where I want my light or my fan to be. And I'm gonna to need to cut that hole, of course, so that I can put a junction box of some sort in there. And in this case, this is a new work box uh, for a light fixture. Um, if you're cutting a new hole in, you're gonna need a old work box, which has the little wings on it that will flip out when you tighten it into that hole. But for this scenario, I'm using a new work box so I can just pin it up here on top. All right, so now all my holes are cut in and before I install any of my boxes, this is where I would run all of my wiring. And for me personally, I typically start at where I'm gonna be putting my light fixture in, running my wiring through that hole. And then of course, everybody's situation is gonna be different. If you've got attic access, this is gonna be a whole lot easier because then you can just run that wiring exactly where you need it to, go to that top plate in the wall where you wanna run it down, and then you're able to drill a hole and just run that wiring straight down to where your switch is going to be. But for people that do not have attic access, it's gonna be a whole lot harder where you're probably gonna to have to cut out some drywall up above where your switch is going to be, fish it first of all to that location, and then feed it down through the top plate here, drilling a hole through the top plate, and then pulling your wiring down through that hole to then fish it down to your switch box. All right, so now that I've got my wiring run from where my new fixture is going to go to where my new light switch is going to go, now I need to run the wiring from where my power source is, which is this receptacle, up to where my new light switch is going to go. So this is where I need to make sure that I've got the power off that's going to this receptacle. So I'm gonna shut the circuit breaker off that's supplying power to it. And then once that circuit breaker's off, I wanna confirm that the power is in fact off going to that receptacle. All right, so now that I've confirmed that there's no voltage going to this receptacle, now this is where I would remove the receptacle from the box. All right, so now that I've got my receptacle out of the way, now I can take my new wiring, run it up through this box that the receptacle's in, and then in behind this drywall up to my new hole that was cut in for the light switch. So for me, it's as easy as just running it up through this box. And since the wiring is rigid enough, I can just run it up. And once I see it in the hole that I cut out for my new switch, I just pull it through that hole. All right, so now that I've got my wiring all run to where I'm gonna need it, now I can start installing all of my boxes. And again, when I'm pushing my wiring into my boxes, I wanna make sure that I have at least six inches of wiring available from where it exits the sheathing. And then also I wanna make sure that I have at least three inches extending past the front of the box. All right, so now I can install my light switch. And what I've got here is these top wires all up here are my load wires, which is what's going on to my light fixture. And then these down here on the bottom are what are my line wires, which are connecting to that receptacle supplying the power. So these will be the hot wires. All right, so the first wires I'm gonna work on are my grounds here. And on a single pull switch, I've just got this one ground screw here. So I can't put more than one wire on that ground screw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna put those together, and then I'm going to make up and take a pigtail, and I'm gonna combine it with my other two grounds that I already have in the box. I personally like to pre-twist my wires because I just think it forms a much better joint, and I know that I've got a good joint before I put my wire nut on. All right, so now that all those are connected, now I can push my ground wires back into the back of the box and out of the way. All right, so next up, I'm gonna start working on my white neutral wires. Now, on a single pole light switch, the neutral wires do not get connected anywhere on the switch. The line and the load just get connected to each other to complete the circuit. And now I can just fold up and push my neutrals into the back of the box. All right, so now all that's left coming out of the box is these two black wires here, my line, and my load. So now I can actually install the light switch itself. So now I'm just gonna make some hooks onto each one of the wires so then I can connect them to the switch. And most of your wire strippers amongst some other tools are gonna have these little holes on them that you just push the wire just barely into and just turn it around the wire itself 
And once you've got it turned around, you've got yourself a perfect J hook. All right, so the first one of these wires that I'm gonna work on is going to be this ground again. So I'm gonna take my light switch and I'm gonna wrap that ground wire around this green ground screw here on the bottom. And when I wrap it around that green ground screw, I wanna make sure that it's going around the ground screw in a clockwise direction. And that's gonna promote pulling that wire in closer to the terminal screw itself and making a nice tight connection. All right, so the only wires I have left are these two black wires here. And on a single pull switch, it does not matter which one of these black wires attaches to one of these terminal screws. They can go in either order. Line or load, it doesn't matter because when the switch flips, that's what makes the connection and causes the power to flow through the switch and then up into your light fixture. But I always like to put my load wire on the top screw and my line wire on the bottom screw. And again, I wanna wrap these around the terminal screw in a clockwise direction and tighten them down. Now that those are all tightened down, now I can push all of that wiring into the back of the box and screw the light switch into the box itself. When using an old work box, we want to remove all of these ears off of the light switch because if we leave the ears on, when we go and tighten this light switch down all the way, it will protrude even that much further out from the wall. And when you go to put your cover plate on, the cover plate probably will not sit flush with the wall itself. This light switch where these ears are, are going to stick out too far. And so there you go, as you can see, now it sits nice and flush and it fits in between these two little ears here on the old work box perfectly. All right, so now I've got my wires that are supplying the power down here and I've got my wires that are then going to my switch up here. And much like I did with the light switch with the ground wire, I'm gonna do the same thing, but with all of these wires with a pigtail for each one of them. I've got one white, I've got one black, and I've got one bare copper for the ground. So now I'm gonna show you if you're somebody that likes Wagos, how I would go about using the Wagos to do this. So I'm gonna take all of my ground wires and put them somewhat up around each other. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Wago here and the way that these work is they've got these levers and then there's these ports that you push the wiring into. And as long as these levers are down, then the wire will be locked into place. And one thing that is nice about these is you can see in the plastic here to make sure that you've got your wiring pushed all the way up and it's got a nice connection. So for example, I'll take my pigtail here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna push it up in one of these ports here. So I'll just push it up in there. And so now all I have to do is push that into place and now it's not coming out and I can see that my wire is all the way up at the top and seated correctly. So now I'm just gonna take my two remaining ground wires and I'm gonna push it up into the Wago like I did with the pigtail. And so now all of my ground wires are connected together using this Wago. And if I ever wanna remove this or remove one of the wires from this, all I gotta do is pull up one of the levers like so, and then the wire will just come out really easy. So now that those are done, I can push those into the back of the box. Now I'm gonna take my white neutral wire and work on my neutrals here. So I'll take my pigtail for my neutrals and I'll just push that up into the Wago. And then I'll take the remaining neutrals and push those up into the Wago as well. All right, so now that I've got all of my white wires and my pigtail put together, now I can push those into the back of the box. And then just like I did with my neutrals and my grounds, I will take my two remaining black wires and using a Wago, connect the two remaining black wires with the pigtail. And then once those are all connected, I can push those into the back of the box as well. So like the light switch, I'm gonna start with connecting my ground wire to this green ground screw here on the bottom. And again, I wanna loop that ground wire around that green terminal screw in a clockwise direction and then tighten it down. So now I'm gonna take my white neutral wire and on this side of the receptacle, you'll see these silver colored terminal screws. And I will then take my white neutral wire and then push it into the back into one of these holes on the silver terminal screw side. Once that's in place, then I can just tighten it down, which is gonna cause that clamp to clamp down onto that wire and hold it into place. All right, so now all I've got left is this black hot wire here. I'm gonna push it into one of these holes over here on the side that has the brass colored terminal screws. So again, just push that down and in, into place and then tighten it down. And because this is a new work box and it doesn't protrude past the wall, we're not gonna remove the ears off of the receptacle like we did with the light switch. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the power back on and once the power's back on, I'm gonna take my receptacle tester. I'm gonna plug it into the receptacle here and if these two lights here on the right light up, then everything was wired up correctly. 
And so there you go. All right, so we know the receptacle works, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about adding a light fixture or a light source using a receptacle. So I'm gonna go ahead, flip this light switch on and see if it works. And so there you go. Now we know that everything's wired up. We are able to wire up a light fixture using our existing receptacle. Now, if you like electrical projects, I'll post one right up here. This is where I go in depth about actually doing the pigtails and how to make them and where they're best to be used. So I hope that you found this helpful and interesting. And if you did, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.